Joining me now is Jen Psaki, host of Inside with Jen Psaki, of course, right here on MSNBC at noon Eastern on Sunday, and of course, the former Biden White House press secretary and former uh, State Department. Yes, we did many world travels yes, together. Yes, we have. <laughs> uh, but this is a world travel, a different world. Alberto yes. Gonzalez, a Bush era attorney general, talking about jail time for a Republican former president. Exactly. And I thought the point he made was so interesting. One, he's been out there advocating for, reminding people that the Justice Department does not target Republicans. The majority of people who work there are um, career officials who are not affiliated with either party um, historically. But what I th he said is so interesting because it goes right to the point. Oath keepers, people who participated on January 6th in the insurrection, many of them have gone to jail. That was part of the Department of Justice's strategy. So if Donald Trump is convicted of that, shouldn't he also go to jail? It is a equal justice under law question, but I was surprised. It took him a second to get there, but yeah. that he did go there in the interview. And here's Mike Pence just, uh, uh, just today in Atlanta in the last hour. Mike Pence talking about the Georgia case. He was mm -hmm. in Atlanta, I guess one of the same form forum. The first principles are that no one's above the law. But the former president and uh, all of those involved are entitled to the presumption of innocence that every American is entitled to. That being said, uh, I do think it's important, ir irrespective of that case or other cases going forward, that we speak the truth to the American people. That uh, I, I had no right to overturn the election. Uh, and the Georgia election was not stolen. The Georgia election was not stolen, and I had no right to overturn the laws. So he's threading that needle. And that's his, he's now consistently framing it that way leading into the debate. Which is so interesting. And also, uh, Ron DeSantis also came to the brink of saying uh, just last week that the election was not, was legitimately won by Joe Biden. That's a paraphrase. What's also interesting to watch is Martha McCallum, who is moderating this debate next week, has essentially suggested that she might raise this question about whether or not these candidates think the 2020 election was won by Joe Biden. That would be very interesting if that happens. We will see, given that has been the majority of Republican candidates and Republican leaders have been saying for years now that it wasn't. Um, so that could be a real shift. And as someone who's worked in campaigns as well as in the White House, uh, what about the political action committee by a very well-known, perhaps the leading uh, campaign advisor, Jeff Rowe, on the Republican side, putting out on, on a very accessible website a really... Um, I don't know, strange, patronizing. I would say, yeah, yeah. Patronizing, I mean, because, and strange, playbook for yeah. what DeSantis should do, telling him how many times he should say this and mm -hmm. how many times he should say that, and he should defend Donald Trump to the... Yes. Well, first of all, it's important to remember Jeff Rowe is like, I mean, I grew up in the Obama world. That was my big exper early experience in politics. He's like the David Axelrod of the right. Ron DeSantis world. And he's running the super PAC, which shows you the power of super PACs. And his political advice to Ron DeSantis is to essentially say, he has exact quotes in this memo, Donald Trump is weak. We should lay off him and, and not, not attack him from this stage, which is a questionable strategy. But also it's suggesting that um, Donald Trump shouldn't be a part of the discussion, that these candidates who are trying to defeat him shouldn't talk about his legal issues, the fact that this, the frontrunner has been indicted four times, that shouldn't be on the table. There's a lot of things that are questionable about that. It also in the memo advises Ron DeSantis to go after Vivek Ramaswamy, which tells you a lot about who they think the biggest threat is to them. At this Which point is in really time. interesting because his polls have been creeping up as well. And finally, Donald Trump listening to his lawyers, listening to advice. This is not usually what happens. He's been on loan line attacking prosecutors and everybody else. But here he's decided to cancel that heralded Monday press conference and the way he was going to irrefutably. Uh, explain what was wrong with the indictment in Georgia. Exactly, Andrew. I mean, it, 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 it is the first time that, that to our knowledge, uh, Donald Trump has taken, it seems like, the advice of his lawyers. It could tell you a lot of things, including that maybe he's concerned about the seriousness of these legal issues and recognizes that him going out and speaking publicly and saying things in a forum like that could hurt him uh, in the courtroom. Well, Jen, I want to hear more and more from you, but I'll have to watch on Sunday. Sunday at noon, and be sure to all of you join, uh, tune in Sunday at noon for Inside with Jen Psaki right here on MSNBC.